Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo with the Paper Pixie. Tonight is episode 225. I also wanna say hello to my replay watchers or my replay warriors. Welcome, say hello and where you're watching from. I'm gonna stop and say hello to a few of you watching live. Hi Janie, Rosemary, Wanda. Hi Rita, Kelly girl, hello. Hi Salisa, Kelly, Lois. Mrs. Liz, welcome. Hi, Ree. Let's see. Hi, Laura, Linda. Hi, Cheryl from freezing Vermont. Ooh, it's been a little chilly here in Atlanta too, but not probably not as cold as Vermont. <laughs> oh, good. You have sound, Tina. That's always a good sign. Hi, Gail from Georgia. Hi, Nora, Deb. We're coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia in the Atlanta area. My husband, Brian, is going to be watching those fast and furious comments looking for your questions. If the questions don't relate to tonight's projects, we will um, set them aside for the end and I'll try to do some quick rapid fire question answering for you. Ooh, 10 degrees in Michigan. What did your sister say it was in New York? Eight? 20. 20. Okay, I don't know, I had eight. Negative 10 in Brainerd. Negative 10, oh my gosh. I know it's winter time, but still. Oh, you guys are awesome. Hi, Sandy, Deanne, Mary. Welcome. I've got a couple of show and tell items from the kids tonight. Uh, let's see. I've got, i um, going to share a little bit about my Stampin' Blends labels. I updated those. Girl Scout cookie season is still in full force. That goes through March 11th, I think. <laughs> I think that's the date for digital cookie. So we'll jump through those things really quickly and then we'll jump into tonight's projects. I have got, let me give you a quick sneak peek so you know what we're going to do tonight. A really quick and easy car great for using up your designer series paper scraps that's using that new daffodil delight <laughs> the, the celebration designer series paper and i was putting this together at the very last minute i want to give a shout out to myrtle thorn for bringing this to my attention french demonstrator let me get her name right ludivine bertois from, she's a French demonstrator from Ludibolus Creations. I'm probably butchering the name, but it's a little lipstick holder, you guys. I don't want it to cover my face. So, so cute, but using that daffodil paper from Celebration, which is free with a $50 order. All right, let's jump into a couple of things really quickly. If you don't know me, I'm Julie DiMatteo. You can visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects to inspire you. I love sharing what I love with you. So, there's some organization stuff over there. I love doing 3D projects. I also love cards. They were my first love. And if you place an order with me during the month of January, please remember to use the, this month's host code as I'm blocking it again. I always forget that. Hold on, let me fix that really quick. Um, so if you place an order of $50, $50 or more with me, you get to choose a free gift of, from these three options. The easiest way to have the, have the host code applied to your order is to use the link thepaperpixie.com slash shop. If your order is going to be 100, 150 or won't use the host code, but you'll still get to pick a free gift from me. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, I've practiced that several times, uh, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Girl Scout cookies really quickly. My daughter Lily is in Girl Scouts and they are selling cookies. We're doing it strictly online this year through digital cookies. So if you don't have a local Girl Scout, Lily would love to be your cookie supplier. Um, that will be available through, I believe, March 11th. And quick update, the Adventure Fulls, which are the new brownie inspired salted caramel cookies. They are currently having some supply chain issues. So they were they're gonna fulfill orders that were um, put in up through January 23rd and they'll be back with them but just to give you a heads up if you were hoping to get some of those I think they've turned that off for now and my stamp and blends labels let me go ahead and flip my camera really quickly and show you what I mean here I have a uh, eight dollar digital download these are all stamp and blends colors retired we've got 10 retired we, we have I think it's 49 current and we have five new ones that are coming really really excited about these I wrapped them with ribbons they'd stay together these are the new natural tones blends perfect all kinds of different skin tones but I create these labels that you just punch out with a 3 8 of an inch circle punch I saw another fantastic idea from a fan she used her scan and cut to cut out all the circles super smart 
and I just affix them on the end with mini glue dots. But that, um, let's see, that digital download you can find at thepaperpixie.com slash blends. And let's see, what else did I want to tell you? You could also print it on sticker paper. I have not tried that yet. Um, but I would assume that would be fine. A little tedious probably pulling the backing off, but those end caps are super tiny. So just wanted to give you a heads up. If you have already ordered the Stampin' Blend labels from me, um, I think I first launched them in August. You should have received an email with a free update of the Stampin' Blends. If you didn't see that email, check your spam. And if it's still not in your spam, feel free to reach out to me and we can look into it for you, okay? All right. What else did I want to tell you? I think that's it. Let me switch, flip the camera one more time, and I want to show you what the kids have for show and tell. One moment. Nolan doesn't have artwork for you, but he wanted to show you the ukulele he got for Christmas. So my aunt and uncle got this for him. My uncle plays the ukulele. Nolan's way into dinosaurs, so we'll see if we can try to teach him how to play it a little bit. And then I don't know if your kids or grandkids are into, um, what is it? Uh, cat, no, dog man. I think it's dog man. Those, that series of books, they have like how to draw in the back. This is my daughter, Lily's drawings. I think she crossed that out cause she wanted to start over, but these are so cute. I think that's a taco with muscles. I don't know the names of these characters. Some of you may know them, but they look pretty, pretty good. They try to draw them at the end of the book. So this is what Lily wanted to show you tonight. Our little resident artist. She will be racing in the Powder Puff Derby this weekend, also known as the Pinewood Derby. Um, what the Boy Scouts do, they're letting the Girl Scouts do this year. So she was decorating her, I would have grabbed it. I didn't. Even, I, may, I may show you whenever we get the car back, but she colored Girl Scout cookies all over it and the Girl Scout emblem. And so that should be fun. Brian and Lily will do that this weekend. All right, I think that is it. Let me show you the paper we're using tonight so you can see right where it is. In the celebration brochure on page four is the daffodil afternoon. I think I called it daffodil delight. <laughs> As you get to know me more, I don't always remember the names, but daffodil afternoon noon that is with any $50 purchase. It is a full pack of designer series paper, 12 sheets of six sorry, 12 sheets total, two sheets of six double-sided designs. So really, really great. So it's just like our full packs of designer series paper, but I love when you can pick paper for free with a $50 purchase because you can never have too much paper. So let's jump in and do the card really quickly. The card is the fun and easy one. I love the layout. So let me show you what that looks like again. And here we go. And let's see. Um, this is a great way to use up your designer series paper. It just takes some tiny pieces of DSP. And this is technically, it's so funny, it's coming through, this is Daffodil Delight, but it's coming through almost like a pineapple punch, at least on my um, monitor that I'm looking at. But mint macaron is actually the coordinating color in this pattern, but I loved the pop of Coastal Cabana. You really can't go wrong with either one. And that's just our Memento Tuxedo Black Ink stamped and then I die cut that with our circle dies, okay? But let's go ahead and jump into this. This is pale papaya as the base. I love that paired with flirty flamingo. So, so pretty together. All right, so we're gonna start with a base of pale papaya. I love the alliteration. That measures four and a quarter by 11. I've scored that in half at five and a half. half. So fold away from the valley and turn that valley score line into a mountain fold. That's going to be our card base. I'm going to start with the inside. We're going to have a naked inside, but we're going to use very vanilla tonight because that is the coordinating uh, basic here. I almost never use my very vanilla, so I was excited to, to use it tonight for a change. So this piece just measure, measures four by five and a quarter. So I, you know, I, I love my glue. It is super cost effective and um, lasts a really long time. And as I've mentioned before, if you use centrifugal force, you would be amazed. It's like a bottomless bottle of adhesive. Not really, but it seems like you can always get just a little bit more. I have a hard time, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time throwing away my uh, multi-purpose adhesive bottles because I keep thinking I can get just a little bit more glue out of it. 
All right, so on the front, we are gonna start with, let me make sure I can see my measurements. This is a piece of Flirty Flamingo and it measures three and a quarter by four and a half. And that's just gonna glue right here. I'm gonna wait to do that because we'll, we're gonna start to build our layers here. So have fun looking at your patterned paper. Use what you have, or if you fall in love with this, desi the, this designer series paper, obviously you can get it for free. Um, but look at patterns that you like together, sort of contrasting patterns. I love putting um, like plaids and stripes with florals. I just love that combination together. So I looked through really all of my designer series paper and I love the way that these three patterns look together from this paper. So we're going to start with one piece. This is portrait that measures one and one eighth by two and three quarters. That's this piece. This piece here is one and three quarters, two and three quarters both portrait and then this one is landscape and it is three inches by one and three eighths okay I will post this card to my blog tomorrow with all the measurements so you can create it yourself if you're not catching them today you can always watch the replay if you can't wait till tomorrow as well so we're just gonna start to piece this together you're gonna have about an eighth of an inch of the flirty flamingo sort of like peeking through or peeking out from behind each of these patterns so I kind of just like to start with the bottom one and I'm just, again, liquid glue is great for this. Just basically sliding it into place before I press it down. Brian braved Michael's today, you guys. And he said he liked it better than Joanne's. <laughs> he, liked it he liked the layout better. And I kind of agree with him. But um, he had to go get some paint pens for Lily and some stuff for the kids' Valentines. But there's not a lot of guys that would brave the craft stores for you, are there? <laughs> I got a lucky one. Or I got lucky, right? Now this pattern is just the back side of the bottom piece. Sometimes I gotta turn my paper, paper to get it look right. It's funny how your brain works. There we go. All right, so there's that. Now, um, for mailing purposes, it really doesn't matter if you add dimensionals, but I'm gonna not add any extra dimension to this except for the flower, since that does have an embellishment on it. So I'm just gonna glue this straight to the card base. But this is just one of those layouts that are so easy to put together and you can use anything in your stash I love a good card that uses up scraps because I don't know about you much like my glue bottles I don't like to get rid of my scraps either <laughs> until I'm busting at the seams and then I have to do something about it all right so there's that now ahead of time I this time I heat embossed so this is coming from the flowering tulips stamp set I absolutely fell in love with this sentiment because of the fact that you you are so thoughtful is curved around the thank you and I love the way that the K and the U have those little swooshes. So I heat embossed that in black. See if you can catch the shine a little bit. This was my first true love with card making was heat embossing. So that is on Coastal Cabana. And then I die cut that with the layering circles dies and I want to say it's the one, two, three from the smallest. Nope. Fourth from the smallest. <laughs> Always over underestimate. That's the one. So four starting from the smallest. If you count one, two, three, four. That's the one that I die cut that fits that sentiment really well. So we're going to go ahead and just with liquid glue. Again, not trying to add too much dimension, but I'm going to center that sort of like the thank you is centered in that eighth of an inch break between the designer series papers and then I'm centering it here as well just sort of where my eye goes for that I knew I had forgotten something so we're going to use daffodil delight I forgot to bring out a scrap and the flowers and leaves punch I love this little flower here so we're just going to punch out one of those that's in the annual catalog we have a little bit of a mess with all the extra pieces that pop out. 
And then, hold on. I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Pierce mat because I love using this with the end of the take your pick tool. Or I should say the putty end with the lid on. I just pressed that right in the center. You see how it gave it that dimension, I'm trying to get it cut in the angle a little bit there. So I just pressed right in the center. Those petals kind of wrapped around it. See if you can see that there. Anything that's got kind of like a rounded tip like that, a, you could even use, I've got a Sharpie that's got a little rounded tip, that would work, anything like that. And then I'm gonna grab the matte black dots when I can find them. And I'm just gonna grab one of those as the flower center. You could, uh, you could use the iridescent gems or, or rhinestone jewels the iridescent basic jewels or the rhinestone basic jewels, either would work for that. And then I'm actually gonna use liquid glue here because I don't want it to go anywhere. You could use a glue dot as well, but I would actually recommend using multiple glue dots. And the only reason is I feel like multiple glue, glue dots uh, help anchor, I'll kind of put it this way, I think. No, I like it that way. Two glue dots anchor it so it doesn't kind of like spin around on you. So there we go, how easy was that? Super quick and easy, love the patterned layout for designer series paper. And then that again is heat embossed with black. That is our, is one of the kids coming down? No. Oh, the colors? Yeah, showing up different on mine than yours. Oh, interesting, yeah, the monitor is different. Maybe yours is more true to color anyways. It's so funny, it's always hard. I set the white balance beforehand to try to make sure the colors render, um, but you never know, the monitors look differently, so. But quick and easy layout, I will be going back to this many times. I love using multiple sides of the designer series paper on a card. And easy is one of my favorites, right? All right, so that is project number one. Let's jump into project number two. Again, giving a shout out to my team member Myrtle for the idea. And I wanna make sure to give a shout out to Ludivine Bertois, French demonstrator. I um, pixie-fied her measurements, they were in metric. I came up with the imperial measurements and then I pixie-fied the box just a little bit. So you'll notice I don't have a sentiment on this because I ran out of time. So there will be a sentiment when this posts. The plan is that this project will post on Friday with a shortened tutorial and all the measurements, but look at how cute that is from the side. So I made mine a little bit longer. I'm gonna show you, I've got the, um, what is this? The ever smooth, what is it, lip tied? <laughs> Peptide lip tide. Peptide lip therapy. That's just what I had to grab. I don't have a lot of lipsticks in the tube like that. And it needed a little bit of extra room. I had started with three and one eighths of an inch and it was a pretty tight fit. So the inside or the interior of this box will fit three and a quarter inches wide by one inch deep. So it's a pretty good size. It should fit most lipsticks or like lip glosses that are in a similar tube like lipstick. Let me know if you are seeing that those measurements are way off, but it would be pretty easy to resize this if you needed it to be longer. But I just think it's so cute from the, from the side. It's like this little tote bag and that's gingham ribbon. So this is Bumblebee, but Daffodil Delight and Crushed Curry are what are in the paper, but those just look really nicely together. So that's one of the things I love, love about six colors. Pretty easy to mix and match because we've got some shades that are very similar, so. All right, let me get the measurements ready here. I did want to show you really quickly what this paper looks like. I know you're gonna ask, the swatch book comes from my upline, Brian King, he's amazing. He offers these at the beginning of every catalog, but it's just a really cool contrast of colors and you get the dark background, the light background, and it's free with a $50 purchase, so you can't not love free. So there's that. Get my pieces and parts together. We're gonna start with the outside. That is the super quick and easy part. I don't have a template for this because I don't think you need one. I do have a template for the inside piece. So this piece measures, let me look at my notes, three and a quarter by seven and seven eighths, okay? So bringing in the Simply Scored, we are gonna score, let's get this out of the view here. I've kind of flipped it over. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but cardstock, 
seems to have, and it's probably based on the way that Stampin' Up! cuts it down to the eight and a half by 11 size, but there seems to be like a front and the back. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. So I have a ten tendency to say, oh, this is the back or this is the front. So I'm gonna flip it to the back side or start with one side and we're gonna score at one inch on both ends, okay? Then I'm gonna flip it again because these folds are gonna go in different directions. And then I'm gonna score at three and three eighths from each end. So I like to remember less measurements. So we had this flipped over. We did, did one inch and one inch, flipped it over again, and we did three and three eighths and three and three eighths, okay? Or you could say one, three and three eighths, four and a half, six and seven eighths. While we've got the Simply Scored out, let's work on this piece. And this piece measures five by seven and a quarter. Now the scoring measurements on this are really easy. We're gonna score at one and two on all four sides, okay? We're gonna do a double reinforced box insert here that takes this treat holder or gift holder up a notch. I guess it's a lipstick gift bag. I never know what to call these projects. You guys always come up with great ideas. All right, so you're gonna have like this giant grid here. See that, see that? And I'll bring the template back in just a moment. Let's start with the first piece that we scored. I am gonna make sure that I take the valley score lines and turn those into mountain folds. Okay, so those are the one inch marks. And then the same thing, take the valleys, turn them into mountains. It's the easiest way to remember. And then you get sort of that nice crisp, crisp full inside, but this is how this is gonna go together and why we scored on opposite sides. I kinda like to squish it a little bit so you can see that, okay? We're also gonna round all four corners with the detailed trio punch. That just gives it a really nice finish. Probably could have done that before I burnished. Sometimes the cardstock will fight you. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, the designer series paper for this piece, hopefully I've probably misplaced one of them. Um, all right, so we've got two pieces of this. This measures two and a quarter by three and an eight. I want to double check that. Where did I put my ruler? I'm pretty sure that that's right. Two and a quarter by three and an eighth. That's right. So those are gonna glue down right here. If your glue bottle gets gunked up on the end like mine, just take the glue off and rub it off your fingers. <laughs> there we go. So that's basically going in between the score lines in the, in the widest shin. And you only have about a sixteenth of an inch of that flirty flamingo. Did I tell you this was flirty flamingo? I did not. The flirty flamingo cardstock. If you've got a directional pattern, you want these pieces to be in landscape. And you want to make sure that when you adhere the landscape pattern, that it's going in the right direction. So these are actually going to be opposite each other with the way that this outs outside. So you want it to go top to bottom and then turn it around this way, top to bottom. But look at that, I love the colors in this paper. Love the little black lines, etc. So there's that. We're gonna come back to this in a moment. Let's focus on the interior of the box. I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines to start. Then I'll bring in the template for you. Looks different to you? No. It's like certain colors that look different, isn't it? That was a glue bottle that Lily had at school. That was a glue bottle she had at school? Oh. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> Lily borrowed my glue for a school project. She was doing doing it. Was it a drama? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
And when your mom is a paper crafter, she's got all the supplies. All right, scissors. So here's the template. I'm gonna ha have it in landscape when I do this. We are gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines along the long side, but we're gonna stop at the second horizontal score line, okay? Now it does look like we are removing a lot of cardstock. We kind of are, but that's what gives you this really nice reinforced edge um, holder. So I'm actually gonna, I like, it's easier for me to see the score lines from the back side. So we're just gonna do that and I'm cutting just right down the middle of the score lines. Just do all of those first. Have you guys been playing the game Wordle? I keep asking people, because I just heard about it and started playing it a few days ago. Of course, apparently my husband's been playing it for a while and I didn't even know it. I'm sure he told me and I didn't even realize what he was talking about. But I was like, what are these, what are all these people posting on social media? These green and yellow, or yeah, green and yellow boxes, so. I like it because it's only one word a day and it's kind of cool that everyone in the world is working on the same word. All right, all right, so we've done something like that, okay? Here's what I like to do is just kind of turn it clockwise or yeah, clockwise. And I'm gonna start, we're gonna remove these two squares, but I'm also gonna miter cut on this little one inch section right here. So kind of do that at the same time, miter, and then it'll remove those two squares, okay? And then we're gonna leave one square behind here. That's gonna be our tab, like that, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing here, kind of turn it 180, miter cut while you do it. So we're essentially removing the three squares on the outside, the three corner squares. We're gonna come back and miter cut a little bit more, but let's get rid of the rest of the bulk here. Again, the outside section, you're removing two squares. Then one section in, you're removing one. And then here, this box is a little bit fun to put together. <laughs> You'll see, we've got lots of paper to kind of fold in. And Now what we're gonna do is just come in and miter cut everything else that needs to be miter cut. I like to fold the big sections out of the way so uh, to isolate those tabs, and then I'll just come in and start working my magic, removing those just a little sl sl angled over there. Any, the rule of thumb is basically any part of the cardstock you're gonna fold into the box. You wanna try to do this little sliver cut out here that make sure those edges don't get in our way. And you'll also wanna do that just on these two sides as well. Now it's funny, for being such a small box, uh, there's quite a, there's, you know, just as many cuts as if you were doing a larger box. That side is finished, let's turn it 180. Again, I like to fold that big section out of the way. Do we have Wor Wordle fans in the comments? <laughs> I thought so. I thought I was amongst my, amongst my peeps. Yeah, Wordle's fun. Now, here's my advice. It's not an app, so don't fall for the apps. It is a website that you can visit once a day to play the word game. And what's cool about when you share it is nobody gives the word away. It just shows how many tries it took you to get it. And I think you get six tries. What happens if you don't get it on the sixth try? You lose. You just lose. You now, don't get... Now there's a bot on Twitter that's ruining it for people. Oh, boo for bots. <laughs> All right, so that now is going to look like our template. Seems kind of crazy, right, for a little lipstick box, but it, it just takes this up a notch. This template will, will be with the post as well. All right, so I'm going to bring in some tear and tape here. And yeah, don't download the app. Exactly. Wordle.com from UK. It is like a UK link, so super fun, though. I made the mistake. I downloaded the app, and I'm like, this doesn't seem like what people are playing because it just kept giving me words. But I love the fact that you can hop on over a cup of coffee and try to play the word. Today was hard as well. I was having a hard time with words this week. I am just taking the tear and tape and lining it on these outside sections just right up to the edge. This just makes it easier and really less messy when you go to fold in this double reinforced edge. Now. 
Normally, I would tell you it's easier to pull the backing off before you start to glue the tabs in. In this case, these are really going to stick to your hands. So we're just going to, you'll see how it is a little challenging to pull the backing off, but it's less challenging than how much you're going to stick to the tear and tape if you take the backing off now. But you've been warned, do it however you like, okay? So we are going to start with each tab and I'm going to put liquid glue on one tab at a time. We're going to line up then this cut edge with this score line and start to form our box corners. Now the liquid glue I love for this because I can slide things right into place and square up that corner there. And then we'll just work our way around to the rest of those tabs. Now remember there's tap this tab looks very similar. We don't want to do that. The one with the tear and tape, leave those tabs alone for now. And I'm just, I've got my index finger on the inside of the box, just kind of helping me slide that tab into place. And I realized I didn't um, adhere the designer series paper first. So note to self for the video recording. <laughs> So I actually really like the way that the reinforced box, it just gives us a much nicer finish because you can see the edge of the box there and I like that folded edge there versus a raw edge. But it's completely up to you and your preference. If you didn't want to do the reinforced ed edge, you would just take away two inches from the measurement. So instead of, uh, let's see, instead of five by seven and a quarter, you would do three by five and a quarter. And then you would only do score one inch on all four sides, okay? We're basically just doubling the side. It just I, I personally think it gives it a nicer look. I don't love the um, sort of raw edge of a box right there, especially for something that I'm giving as a gift. But that's just my own personal preference. All right, so now is the fun part. We're gonna pull off the tear and tape. Okay, <laughs> and it's a little hard to get at. Where is, I know it's right in front of me, my take your pick tool. Yes, it is. I'm also missing a piece of designer series paper. All right, so I'm just gonna try to pull the backing off. If you've got nails, it'll probably be easier for you. Just try to get your tool underneath that backing and pull it off. All right, last one. So I'm going to fold in the sides first. Those are the easiest. They don't have to go over any other cardstock. Makes it real easy. And then we're going to do these sides. Now they're going to be going over those tabs, so it'll fight you just a little bit. But as I always say, tell that cardstock who's boss. <laughs> and then I like to come in with my bone folder and just crispin everything up. Is that a word? Crispin? crisp everything up. <laughs> oh goodness, let's get my mess tidied up real quick. All right, I'm gonna put you on the hunt, I think. There's a tiny little seven eighths of an inch square piece of designer series paper. And if not, I'm gonna grab one from the other, <laughs> my video, oh, yeah, this one will work. All right. All right, so we've got four pieces of designer series paper, which I would actually recommend that you adhere before, and I will do that in my video tutorial. But these pieces measure, this is in landscape, we're doing, I know I wrote it down, seven eighths by three and one eighth. So I've got two pieces of that, and then two pieces that are seven eighths by seven eighths square. So those are gonna go on the ends of our little lipstick box here. And always easier when you're working on a flat surface, but we'll make this work. Slide things into place there. Getting some good questions for the Q&A. <laughs> I heard you clicking things, so. All right. Ooh, a little heavy-handed with the glue there. There we go. 
And then these again, I said were landscape, so you just want to make sure you put them right side up. And this is just a little nice surprise when the recipient opens their little lipstick gift box. And now the daughter needs to be reminded it's time to go to bed. <laughs> She's our little bookworm. Can't put the books down. All right. So now for this piece, I am just going to put liquid glue right along the bottom. Somewhat generous, not super tons of glue. And we're just going to glue that right in that center section. Now you've got about an eighth of an inch of wiggle room and the liquid glue is going to give you a chance to kind of slide things in. I'm back. Okay. A little hiccup with the internet I think is going on. Our router has been rebooting. It, is, it, is there ever a good time for the router to reboot? But it's always inopportune times. Today I was on a work conference call and the router rebooted and so I think our router may be on the fritz, but of course, AT&T doesn't have an updated model, do they? Nope. <laughs> so that's essentially how that goes together, okay? Now, you do not have to put lipstick in this. You could put treats. I bet, I know that Hershey's Kisses would fit in there because I'm pretty sure they have a, ooh, I think they're a one inch base. It might be one and an eighth, but you'll have to try it. But I know you can find other treats to put in here as well if, if you don't want to give a lip, lipstick. I'm going to beg, borrow, or steal and show you how that fits in there. And obviously it would take, um, this isn't a, an in, an in dollar, but the box is. So it would fit multiple, I'm sure multiple brands. That's just the chapstick that I like to use. So that'll fit nicely in there. And now what I like to do is, let me see if I can show you from the side. Just kind of go like this with the cardstock load. It's easier when you use the desktop but I'm just trying to give that cardstock a little bit of a curve there on the side. Okay, again, telling that cardstock who's boss. I'm gonna grab an eighth of an inch circle punch, and this is retired from Stampin' Up, but I know you all have something like that in your stash. So I'm just lining up the top there, and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna take the chapstick out. And it's pretty forgiving where you punch here because the ribbon's really going to cover most of it. But I'm just kind of trying to center it top to bottom, left to right as best I can. Then we're going to grab the bumblebee ribbon. Where have you gone? All right. We'll see what I come up with for embellishments for this when I do the video tutorial. But you could add a little tag here would be cute. So I'm just going to pick... Oh, which side do I want to be the front? I think I like this one. So I'm going to feed the ribbon through the right side, then around to the back and back through to the front. Okay. And then we're going to tie our bow here. I've got my reverse tweezers here. Just gonna use those to be my third hand here. There we go. All right, now let's judge a little bit before we trim it off the spool. And then trim off the ends. Gonna leave the tails a little long on here because I think that looks so cute with this gingham ribbon. That I can, I can actually slim there now. But there is our little lipstick gift box. It almost looks like a little gift bag. I don't know, we'll figure out what we're gonna call it. <laughs> so super cute, you can add a sentiment here. What would be really pretty is like white heat embossing on basic black, that would be really nice. I'll probably do something with Coastal Cabana again to go with the card. Um, but super cute. So thank you again to Ludivine Bertois for the idea and the inspiration. Love it. I hope you guys love this and we'll give this a try as well. Let me clean up my mess a little bit. We'll jump into some rapid fire Q&A and then we're going to do some prize patrol. Okay, how's that sound? Cleaning up my 
always the crafter math, right? I got a crafter math going on here. All right, let's flip the camera here. I'm going to go into your, oh, off. <laughs> go into your questions, comments, start. All right. Where did you find the mat used to make for the shape of the flower? So Edna, that is available from Stampin' Up. It's called the Stampin' Pierce Mat. Flip the camera really quick. That's what it looks like. Nice foam mat. This is great for stamping with our photopolymer sets. I love it for giving dimension to flowers and things like we did on the card here. What else do I use it for? Um, piercing as well, paper piercing. You can see I've got some piercing holes on this as well. Very forgiving mat, but it works really well for so many different things. Great thing to have in your stash. All right. Ooh, Paula, I like how you think. A roll of lifesavers. I'm going to have to go back to one of my projects and figure out what the length was for that, but I think you're right. I think lifesavers would work. Great question. Would Hershey's Nuggets fit in it? Hmm. Let's check. They should. I'm just going to grab a few here. I'm going to tear into this one. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. You're not watching me here. Let's do this hands on. All right, so Hershey's Nuggets at their widest, I think are an inch and an eighth, but you would fit. They're a little bit awkward, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Don't you think it's a little, they're a little wobbly. I mean, you could put, put Hershey's Nuggets in there for sure, but they're just, I don't know. I think you might actually be okay. Look at that, let's see. It's a little bit tight. Oh boy, do I have one more? I do. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can see, it is bulging just a little bit. Not badly, but yeah, I think that would work. Look at that. Who wouldn't want six Hershey's Nuggets? Um, I have another treat that you can see is one of my favorites. I only have one left, but if you guys tried these milk hazelnut wafers, they're called Noppers. Um, probably, I mean, that would fit in there too. That'd be kind of cute. I probably wouldn't do the double reinforced box for that, but, um, anyway, something different to do. Can you tell I have a treat drawer behind me? The kids always like to check that drawer out. All right. Great question. Thank you. Oh, I meant to take that one off. Let's do this one. Okay. Why do you have a dark line down the middle? Oh, good question, Judy. So that is... So that I do diagonal score lines. So let me show you. Any simply scored I get, um, I have a couple of them because I use them a lot. I put a black Sharpie line down the center so that I can do something with, I'm trying to come up with an example here. Pretend this is a piece of cardstock. Let's say I can line up the points and that allows me to do a diagonal score line because I know that I'm starting at the six inch and I can finish at the six inch. And the six inch seems to be a good spot and the simply scored right in the middle to do that. So great question. Do I ever worry about the paper cracking? I do not, Cheryl, not with Stampin' Up's cardstock. I haven't um, experienced that with their cardstock. The paper fibers are really um, strong and I haven't had any paper crapping, crack, paper crapping, paper cracking when I do that double reinforced edge. All right, Kelly. Oh yeah, so that should be the same answer with the lifesavers, I think, Kelly, but great idea. I'm pretty sure, I do have a, I know that I have a project that holds <clears throat> either the breath savers or the lifesavers because they're around the same size. I think one of them is slightly longer than the other, but I'll double check the width on those. Okay. Does the chat stick? I don't think that it does, Carla. Um, obviously, if you turn it upside down, you can get it out, but um, I don't think that it moves around too much. Oh yeah, lifesavers. We got a lot of those questions. Okay, perfect. I'll move on from that one. It does not need the designer series paper on the box part. That is completely uh, your preference. I personally like the way that that looks when the recipient opens the box. 
but it definitely doesn't need that. It's such a small amount of designer series paper that I don't think it's a waste, but I like the way that that looks when you open it with that, with that really pretty pattern on the box, okay? Again, personal preference. That's the greatest part about paper crafting is you get to do it your way, which I love. Do I ever use the, I do, Linda, um, but I typically do that when I'm just gonna put like one ribbon slot on the front of a card. Normally for stuff like this where I'm doing like two holes, I'll just use the hole punch. It's, it's pretty quick to do that. And I don't love punching through two layers of cardstock at the same time um, with the detailed trio punch if I can avoid it. Yes, you could, Mary, but again, to get them lined up, you would need to, it'd be a little tricky with a detailed trio punch because it works differently than our other punches. You can't see exactly where you're punching as, as easily because of the way that that works, but good question. I think I answered that, Linda. I think that's a duplicate question. The piercing mat is listed in the catalog, Kathy. Hmm. Trying to see. If I, I don't have my annual catalog at the ready, but it should be in there on the pages near, I think, the, tr the paper trimmer. You should see the stamp and pierce mat around there. But feel free to ping me. I can help you find it. What about gems or crafting something instead of a sweet? Oh, to put inside the box? Is that what you're asking, Pammy? Absolutely. You can do put anything in there you want. That'd be great. All right, did we have any other questions that came in? Perfect, thank you, Brian. Why don't we jump into some prize patrol? So if you are new here, I do prize patrol every week. Um, all you need to do is to put, oops, that's the wrong place. In the comments, this is for US residents only. I'm sorry, I just shipped within the US per policy, but hashtag prize patrol. Make sure that you include the hashtag. There's no spaces and that you spell it correctly. That will give you, that will enter you for a chance to win. And I'll be choosing two winners tonight. And I have some extra textures and frames stamp sets. These are so great, for, especially this ink splatter. I absolutely love that one. So good for adding texture to cards. So I've got two of those to give away tonight. So hashtag prize patrol. Um, let's see, let me recap a couple of quick things. If you're interested in my stamp and blends labels, that's paperpixie.com slash blends. Those are available for purchase. It is a print at home digital download. So I do not send you any labels. That's something you can print at home, but it has all the labels you need, whether you've held on to your retired letters or not, including the new upcoming natural tones. We have nine, sorry, we have five new uh, stamp and blend combos coming. It's really 10 new shades of skin to skin tone, and those are coming out February 1st. So if you are thinking about purchasing the starter kit, you can actually get your hands on those markers now because starter kit uh, folks can add anything during dem you know, anything that demonstrators can pre-order is included on the starter kit. So again, quick plug, Girl Scout cookies if you need them. Uh, my daughter Lily's selling Girl Scout cookies through March 11th. And last time for my host code for the month of January, three free gifts to choose from. Best easiest way to shop is the paperpixie.com slash shop and that will automatically add my shopping host code for you. All right, let me go ahead and pop the drum roll screen up. We've got 350 entries. May the odds be ever in your favor. So let's go ahead and choose winner number one. It is so fun to watch these names roll across the screen. Love it. Debbie Pot, congratulations. All right, Debbie, congratulations. When you are ready to claim your prize patrol, you just want to stop by and visit thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol, and I will get your stamp set in the mail along with a handmade card from my stash. Let's go ahead and choose winner number two. Love seeing the familiar names. Joyce Bird, yay! Congratulations. All right. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Congratulations to Joyce and Debbie, tonight's Prize Patrol winners. 
I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. Let me get this off the screen here. If you have any questions, reach out. You know how to reach me at thepaperpixie.com. I will be live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 226. Today's Tonight's card will post to my blog at thepaperpixie.com tomorrow. And tonight's 3D project will post to my blog on Friday with a shortened video tutorial, a picture of the template, and all the measurements and supplies so you can make that project your own as well. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.